Today, we're comparing the Samsung Galaxy S24 versus the Apple iPhone 15. Now, I know making a video on this subject as a tech content creator is playing with fire, but I have extensively used each of these phones, and today I'm gonna to talk about the similarities as well as the differences covering everything you need to know to ultimately help you decide which of these two is right for you. So the Galaxy S24 uh, and the iPhone 15, both with 128 gigabytes, come in at $799 or £799. Both phones also use an aluminum and glass design, uh, and the S24 brought some pretty big design changes to the Galaxy line, kind of taking cues from the iPhone 15's flat frame with rounded edges. And as a result, both phones feel quite similar to hold, but not the same. If we look close, you'll see that while the uh, S24 has rounded edges on the back of the frame, on the front, these edges are actually flat, as opposed to on the iPhone, which has rounded edges on the back as well as on the front, which to me looks a little bit more refined, and as a result means that the iPhone 15 is just a touch more comfortable to hold than the S24. I notice this difference most when swiping from the edges of the display, for example, to go back, uh, or say while holding the phone in my palm when I'm on the go. On the back, the camera modules are quite different. Don't worry, I have an in-depth camera comparison coming up as this is an area where these two are actually very different. But in terms of the design, I actually prefer Samsung's approach here as the uh, metal ring that goes around the lenses actually slightly protrudes to protect the lenses from scratches where it doesn't on the iPhone 15. The Galaxy S24 weighs in at 168 grams compared to the iPhone 15's 171 grams. And I would say this difference is not really noticeable and I would still describe both phones as feeling solid without being heavy. Both phones are also IP68 water resistant, uh, meaning that you don't have to worry about using them in the rain. All in all, uh, these are both really good looking and well-made phones, but ultimately I do prefer the look and especially the feel in the hand of the iPhone 15. But what about the displays? Well, both are OLED and this means that colors are vibrant uh, and details like finer text are sharp, watching videos, sending messages, playing games, you name it, uh, all look good on both displays, but there are some major differences. For starters, uh, the S24 has a slightly larger display, which is 6.2 inches compared to the iPhone 15's 6.1 inches. And impressively, Samsung have managed to increase the size of the display without increasing the overall dimensions of the phone. And this also means that the bezels on the S24 are noticeably slimmer uh, than on the iPhone 15, something I think looks really good. Another big difference is the refresh rate. So the S24 has a 1 to 120 hertz refresh rate, which is double the 60 hertz of the iPhone 15. And this means that any movement on screen, whether you're scrolling uh, or swiping, is just gonna appear extra smooth on the S24. The S24 is also brighter uh, with a peak brightness of 2600 nits compared to 2000 nits on the iPhone 15. And this difference does show when you're out in the sun. It is worth noting though that out of the box, the iPhone 15 has a more natural and therefore more accurate color profile, which is better for photo editing compared to the more saturated look on the S24. I also noticed that there's more uh, off axis color shift on the S24 compared to the iPhone 15. All that said though, clearly the S24 has the advantage and takes this round with its larger, smoother and brighter display. Looking at the front cameras, the S24 uses a minimally obtrusive punch hole camera compared to the larger dynamic island on the iPhone 15. Now, to be fair, the dynamic island does let you see app info at a glance and also houses face ID, which is the best face unlock in any phone. At the same time though, the S24's underscreen ultrasonic fingerprint sensor is great too. Which do I prefer? Ultimately, uh, I would take both. I really like the additional features that the dynamic island adds, but there is something to be said for the effortless integration of the underscreen fingerprint sensor, which you can't even see. This round is a tie. Right, so one of the areas where the Galaxy S24 and the iPhone 15 differ the most is in the camera. So the S24 has a triple lens camera system, including a dedicated 3x telephoto lens, where the iPhone 15 has a dual lens camera system with a 2x telephoto crop, which effectively gives you three focal lengths with two lenses. To best see how these two compare, let's analyze some real world examples. But before we jump in, if you are enjoying this video so far, I would really appreciate it if you'd leave a like and also subscribe to see more videos like this. Here we go. So starting with the main lens, uh, the most important lens, as this is the one you're gonna be using most, the iPhone 15 is sharper. And this is visible here when we zoom into the price tags, as well as comparing the texture of the wood. The iPhone 15 also has better dynamic range. See how there's more detail in the bright sign, as well as the dark walls. In general, the iPhone 15 has better color management. For example, on the S24, this blue shirt starts to look orange, where on the iPhone, it remains blue. I like this photo because it shows the strength on both sides. The iPhone is sharper, but the S24 has a better minimum focus distance, meaning you can get closer to your object to get the shot. 
At times, the brighter, more vibrant color profile of the S24 does work to its advantage. Yes, there's a bit of unwanted skin smoothing, and again, colors are a bit exaggerated, but overall here, the S24 produced a nicer image compared to the iPhone, which is a bit too dark. Thanks to his dedicated 3x lens, telephoto shots on the S24 are sharper and retain more detail compared to the iPhone 15's 2x crop lens seen here, especially when we zoom in. Here, unfortunately, the dark skies on the iPhone 15 are more accurate. Uh, Samsung seems to have a more optimistic take on the weather, which in London may not be a bad thing. Aside from color profile, this photo does again demonstrate the better sharpness on the S24 when we zoom in. Switching to the ultra wide lens, the iPhone 15 has better detail and is sharper in most images, especially here when we look at the texture on the ground as this area gets fuzzy on the S24. Interestingly, in this particular shot, the S24 is sharper, looking at the text in the distance. Of all the lenses, the ultra wide lenses are most similar between the two phones. In low light, the S24 is generally brighter, pulling even more light in dark settings, but can suffer in accuracy and add artificial smoothing, which you won't find on the iPhone. But the iPhone also won't get as bright. You get strong selfies on both phones, but the iPhone pulls ahead here with more true to life skin tones. Comparing 4K video, the iPhone 15 continues to show more accurate skin tones, it is also sharper and less noisy, and the iPhone also more smoothly adjusts to changes in exposure and white balance, producing video that looks less like smartphone video and more like proper camera video. When it comes to deciding what makes a good image, there is an element of personal preference involved. However, objectively speaking, the iPhone 15's camera system is better when it comes to retaining details, showing more dynamic range, as well as how it sets the white balance and also adjusts the colors for individual parts of the frame. As for whether you like the more true to life look of the iPhone 15 or the more vibrant look of the S24 is up to you. In fact, I'd love to hear your thoughts on this in the comments. Me personally, as a content creator, I prefer the more accurate and true to life image of the iPhone 15 and I think all things considered the iPhone 15 takes this category. Now Samsung did add some neat AI photo editing features on the S24 which we will look at in a sec when we compare the operating systems. But first, battery life. Now, as someone uh, who spends way too many hours on their phone each day, this is a category that is very important. Thankfully, both the S24 as well as the iPhone 15 provide strong battery life. I would say I typically get around seven hours of screen on time, ending each day with around 25% remaining. Both phones also use USB-C, however, the S24 supports slightly faster charging, uh, going up to 25 watts versus up to 20 watts on the iPhone. It also supports reverse wireless charging, so you can charge devices like your Galaxy Buds uh, or even your AirPods, which I think is kind of funny. On the other hand though, the iPhone 15 does have MagSafe, and this means your phone will automatically align on a wireless charger, uh, and also lets you use MagSafe accessories like wallets or stands. I would say, uh, in terms of battery life, both these phones really are great, and each offer extra features when it comes to charging. Therefore, this category is a tie. But what about performance and stability? Well, this gets a bit more complicated uh, since the S24 actually ships with two processors depending on where you buy. So for example, here in the UK, I get the Exynos version, but in the US, you get the Snapdragon version. It is kind of a shame to see Samsung go back to using two chips, since the Exynos version of the S24 does fall slightly short of the Snapdragon variant in terms of performance. But how does the S24 compare to the iPhone 15 with Apple's A15 Bionic chip? Well, in day-to-day -day performance, uh, opening apps, switching apps, editing photos, and gaming, both phones keep up very well and deliver flagship performance, as I would expect. In terms of benchmarks, uh, in Geekbench 6, the iPhone 15 shows higher scores compared to the S24 with the Exynos chip, both in CPU as well as GPU performance. As I said, both phones perform really well, but ultimately, on the iPhone, since Apple make both the hardware as well as the software, this means you get an unmatched level of integration and optimization, and this means the overall experience is still smoother and more fluid on the iPhone, and therefore, the iPhone 15 takes this category. At $800, these phones are big investments and therefore should last. Now, for the Galaxy S24, Samsung promises an impressive up to seven years of software support and updates for the first time longer uh, than the five to six years of software updates that I would expect the iPhone 15 to get. And this is really impressive, but it is worth noting uh, that in terms of value retention, the iPhone typically hold their value significantly better than Android phones, including Galaxy phones, meaning you will get more money back if you choose to sell in the future and say want to upgrade. Still, the Galaxy S24, with its extensive seven years of software support, takes this category. Now, I can make a whole dedicated video uh, comparing Android versus iOS. Let me know in the comments if this is something you would like to see. But briefly for now, let's see how these two operating systems compare. Android with One UI on the S24 offers so many features and bells and whistles, some of which are great and others you'll never use. 
it can be customized to your heart's content, meaning that if you put the time in, you can set up your phone to run almost exactly how you want it to. Samsung have also added some neat AI features to the S24. For example, circle to search, which lets you look up anything on screen, and in photos, you can generate fail, you can move objects, and even remove objects. Now, while these features are certainly not perfect, they do offer a glimpse in the future, and by comparison, make iOS look a bit plain. But what makes iOS so special is its unmatched level of optimization, polish, and ease of use. For example, there's no multiple apps for the same function, uh, no useless bells and whistles taking up storage, and the features it does offer are generally really well thought out. It all just works, and works really well right out of the box, even if that means you don't get as many customization options and will miss out on certain features iOS also integrates so seamlessly into the Apple ecosystem from iMessage, AirDrop, uh, the Apple Watch, AirPods, and your Mac. Apple does this like no other. Ultimately, this category is a tie as it really comes down to personal preference. I think both Android plus One UI as well as iOS have matured to a point where you can rest assured knowing that each is highly capable in their own way. And this brings us to the crucial question at the end of the day, which phone is better? Well, let's quickly recap. In terms of design and feel in the hand, this goes to the iPhone. However, the display of the Galaxy is superior. Biometrics is a tie and camera in terms of photos and videos ultimately goes to the iPhone. Battery life too is a tie and performance and stability again goes to the iPhone, but longevity goes to the Galaxy. Ultimately, operating systems, though very different, they're both highly capable and therefore this too is a tie. Adding everything up, we can see that the iPhone pulls ahead in more categories, but the phones also tie in several of them. I would say both phones have their own unique advantages. If I were you, here's what I would do. I would look at the categories that we explored today, choose which matter most to you, and then see which phone best aligns with your priorities to make your purchase decision. For me, as a content creator who is in the Apple ecosystem and who uses my phone both for work as well as business, uh, reliability and dependability is key. And this is why for me, iOS and the iPhone 15 is still the better choice. But the S24 did impress me and is undoubtedly keeping Apple on their toes. Let me know if you have any questions. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, be sure to subscribe to see more content like this in the future, including my upcoming S24 Ultra versus 15 Pro Max comparison video. Really looking forward to that one. Uh, if you haven't seen it yet, I highly suggest watching my S24 and iPhone 15 first things to do videos to unlock the full potential of these great phones. Thank you so much for watching and take care.